Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the mother show. Hezzy! What's up, baby? We out here, man. Another week of brilliant idiotness, man. Mother yeah. neck hurting and shit. Neck hurts? Yeah, my neck hurts. I think I slept wrong. I worked out yesterday, but I think I slept wrong. What'd you do? Uh, yesterday we did legs. That's what's so crazy. So I don't know why my neck would be hurting. Mm. We was talking about that could be a head injury. Yeah, what do you think about... Because you came in super gay today, dude, and it was like... It, it was one of those things, it was, it was I, I had to like recalibrate. Well, I was matching your gay. I was matching your gay because you hit me with a joke. What'd I say? <laughs> I want to give it away because we're going to use it later. It would, all right, fine. Just let it happen and then it might just make it its way into the episode. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, I had to match your gay. So when you asked me what was wrong, I said a head injury. Mm -hmm. And you was like, what head injury? And I was like, I my, hurt my throat sucking dick. Cause that could be I ain't injury. doing this, bro. I ain't doing this right now. I ain't doing this, bro. Yo, you're starting to act like, uh, like uh, fucking what's his face, uh, uh, liquor. Who's liquor? Liquor this dick. <laughs> 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 see, see, he hit me with one of those earlier. Bro, you know the one saying? earlier, I had to work for it too, bro. Because I was like, I was, I had to you work let it go. You had the moment in the beginning. And did he say who? He did. I fucked up. Yeah. No, because oh, you said to me, you repeated said, it right away. And then you, you said, just, yo, such and such shouted you out. And I'm like, what? No, I, no I, do you want to say it? We was, save it. Yeah, we might as well. No, I said, so I said, yo, did you you saw Imagine Dragon shouted you out? And you were like, word, I love them. And I was like, damn, he knows who they are. He was like, you know who Imagine Dragon is? I'm like, yeah. You, then you was like, not the rock group. But I'm like, who the fuck is the rock group? But then you got me because you said, I thought you were about to show me somebody on YouTube. Yeah, it's like, do you so, want to see them on YouTube? I was, and then you're like, sure. And I'm like, do you even care? And I was like, I don't know. This sounds gay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, do you even know who you are? And then you were like, who are they? And I was like, imagine dragging these balls on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Bro, dad jokes are back. <laughs> dad jokes are fucking back. Are fucking back. Okay, Taylor. I let a bunch of them fly yesterday. Wait, what wait, was what? I talking about yesterday? Oh, when the Giants lost. Uh oh. Oh, I was letting them go yesterday. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I was like, <laughs> what, what the fuck did I say? I said, uh. I said, yeah, <laughs> hold on, hold on, I might still have them written down, hold on, I was letting them shit fly yesterday, hold on, let me see if I can find this shit, man, hold Taylor, on, look at you over there. hold on, hold on, hold on, dad jokes are the shit, especially when you with other fucking dads and shit, oh, here we you go, get that, you got that jean jacket from a bunch of? <laughs> okay, I told yeah. I told a dad joke. I said, I told Envy. I said, I'm gonna tell you the story of the. What happened? What happened? <laughs> Nothing. I thought she thought I was trying to set her up. No, did you get it? The brand is it called Buncha? No. All right, fine. Oh, I heard about Buncha. <laughs> yeah. It expands with you. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that shit. That's that's crazy what he just said. That's <laughs> what? he said that you got stretch clothing. Like, no, that's, this what, is that's incredible. What, that's that's what what Buncha. That's, that's fucked up. Why did I get into because what do you mean? Just do play your. It, I mean, it, do, it does look like a bunch do of jackets because of this. Your dumb dad jokes, because mine's are better anyway. Yo, I said, your jokes are phenomenal, bro. I said your jokes are sick. You ever heard the story of the cucumber pickle penis and the New York Giants fan? What is it? Okay. So there was a cucumber, a pickle, a penis, and a New York Giants fan yeah. sitting around talking about how bad their lives were. The cucumber says, my life is terrible. When I get big and hard, they chop me up and put me in a salad. The pickle says, that's nothing. When I get big and hard, they stick me in a jar full of vinegar and vacuum seal me. The penis says, my life is the worst. When I get big and hard, they put a rubber tarp on my head and stick me in a dark room and bang my head against the wall until I throw up and pass out. The New York Giants fan said, my life is terrible because I can't handle Big D. Ooh. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, Ooh. baby. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Oh, I had another one too. Okay. 
Why? Does, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why doesn't New York Giants quarterback Daniel Jones use the phone anymore? Why? Because he can't find the receivers. Ew! <laughs> What does Chick-fil-A and New York Giants players have in common? What's that? They both take off on Sundays. (laughs) (laughs) Don't hate Taylor with your bungee jacket. You got a bunch of jackets. Why you are you do sipping? Well, time out, time out, time out. Y'all didn't see how you just sip that water? Why, why do you how you That's how your neck hair. Look how you sucking it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you shaming me for having a head injury. Why are you shaming me for having a head injury, yo? Huh? <laughs> you never had a head injury? You took all that down once. <laughs> God damn. So that's 12 ounces of water, so How you suck bro. down 12 ounces of water, bro? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See how you got it. Bro, that's crazy, bro. It's a gift. Bro, that's fucking crazy. It's a gift. Bro, it's a gift. You Taylor that jealous, like yo. You fucking rider, bro. You jealous as shit, Taylor. You jealous as fuck. You are a little bit jealous with your bunch of jacket. Jack, stop saying that. And also, what's his rider hates you? That's another thing. That Who? Rider is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Run this dick! Run this dick! Come on! Come on! Oh my god! Hey, Chris, you need to have more fun! (laughs) You a Giants fan, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. No, no, Giants or Jets, whoever's worse. Shit, this year is gonna be a toss up. Jets will be better than the Giants, though. Even with Aaron Rodgers being out for the rest of his life. Yeah, but Aaron Aaron Damn. Rodgers is Damn. out for the rest of his life. But I think the replacement, they have, what is it, Zach Wilson? Please. And then there's Diego Fitness. Who the fuck is Diego? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm not fucking with him. <laughs> Fitness dickhead, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Fitness dickhead, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I was really like, who's Diego Fitness? <laughs> Chris! <laughs> Chris! <laughs> Yo, Diego Fitness. Yo. Where you work at? Diego Fitness? Yo, Diego that's, Fitness. That's one of the best places to work in the one country. One of the best places to motherfucking work. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is out for the rest of his life. Y'all know this yeah. is it, guys. 40 years old, yeah. when are we going to learn that when you get to a certain age, there's certain things you can't do anymore? I know Tom Brady gassed up the world because he played till he yeah. was 76 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there's only one motherfucking Tom Brady. Okay? Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, 75 seconds, four snaps in, gone. 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 Forever. Oof. And he, by the way, he can try to come back, but I don't think he would be smart to. What's oh, the point fair. of coming back from it? And you 40 plus, you know how long that's going to take the heel? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. It's horrible to look at. If you guys can't see, we're looking at it right there. Damn, oh, man. my God. Yeah. Damn. Well. Tried to push off and then, whoop. It's over. Yeah, game over. The Jets got, the Jets was so high. i tell you something, man. The Jets they won. Got, they did win. But boy, New York teams let down the city of New York on the weekend of 9-11. Giants yeah. lose 40 to old, and y'all lose Aaron Rodgers on 9 11. What's a bigger disaster involving Jets? Okay, all right. Okay, guys. Um, guys. What? <laughs> guys, what? can we have a dick joke? Now's the time. Now's the time. Come on, come wait, on. Wait, hey, Alex. Yeah. Aren't you Alex Media, my dick? Something? What? <laughs> <laughs> it don't work like that. <laughs> Alex, Alex, you know Alex? Alex who? Alex sucked the meat off my dick? No. The media off my no, dick? No, 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 no. You an alien, bro. You an alien, bro. You an alien trying to understand that joke. Alex sucked the meat off no, my dick. No, it was close, but no. Oh, wait, was, isn't the Jets defense still nice? No, no jokes Jets defense involved? is still good. Jets defense is still good. Because that's what kept them in the game. Good receivers. I mean, they might... They, uh, they got sauce... Uh, What's his name? Got to have a good quarterback, though, man. Sam Wilson, ain't it? I thought it was Zach Wilson. Oh, Zach Wilson. But wait, if they have, what is, what's his name? Sauce Gardner? Sauce Gardner? 
Who's the the guy that he did the weed celebration with? Aaron Rodgers. What on Hard Knocks? Yeah, I'm honestly not trying to make a joke. <laughs> I think you tried no, to no, no, no. So they hit a handshake where they both go like this, and then they they smoke weed, and then they put it out. I didn't see this. Can you look it up on Twitter? We'll, for the next thirty minutes. We don't know cornerback. The corner, yeah. Yeah. What's his name? Sauce Gardner. <laughs> That's. I know you think that I'm. <laughs> no, they have this. When you become the boy who cried dick, <laughs> now nobody believes you. When you Look become the boy who cried Gardner. dick, they nobody have, believes you. They have Sauce Gardner. <laughs> you know, they, they have. Y'all don't even know the Jets. Sebastian choke on. They got. <laughs> Oh my God, man! <laughs> would right. you, hey, would you date Sebastian Chokon? <sighs> Taylor, would you date Sebastian Chokon? Nope. All right. <laughs> <Dang. laughs> oh, that's Sauce Gardner right there. That's oh, Sexy there. Red was at the game. Yes, she was. Oh, okay. That is Sexy Red. She, she's a Jets fan. Where's Sexy Red from? Yeah, her, she is sexy on the back of her jersey. Interesting. So definitely sexy. All right. Anyway. We warmed up. Let's get to it, man. Uh, right. Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, what are we thinking about this play the, one? Play the, play the fucking... It's well, crazy. first of all, let's, let, crazy. let's give the backstory. Ashton Kutcher and... Um, uh, how you pronounce her name? Mila. Mila Kunis yeah. addressed backlash to Danny Madison letters. I support victims. Hold on. Stay, stay right there, Taylor. Kutcher and Kunis both wrote letters seeking leniency in, in sentencing for Madison after he was convicted on two counts. Now, if you have a history with a person, mm. right? Mm. They've mm. clearly spun a lot of time with them. They were all on what, that 70s that show 70 together? Show? If you want to write a letter, mm -hmm. right? Not saying that they're saying that he should get off. They said, yo, I'm writing a letter because I'm, I'm looking for leniency, whatever it is. Yeah. We know him. I don't know if I, I didn't read the details of the letter. My whole point is, if you know a person and you feel like you want to write this letter because you know this person, why do you care about the backlash? You have to know you're going to get backlash before you fucking send the letter back. They don't think that letter's getting out. Yeah. Really? And then guaranteed the... You didn't watch the video? Oh. No, let's see. Let me hear it. Come on, it's brilliant idiots, man. We don't pay attention to fucking <laughs> facts Where and shit. Of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault Sexual abuse or rape. Ashton's a better actor. Yeah. But listen, but that's like, exactly yeah, yeah, like yeah. she's not that good at acting. Yeah. Like she she needs to be a mom. Well, it sounded a little too scripted. But, yeah, but him, he was good at acting. Yeah, like, he, he, like it, it sounded a little warmer, a little normal. It was more believable. But it goes back to my point about what I just said. They didn't write letters saying, hey, this guy is innocent, yada, yada, yada. They just say, yo, give him some leniency mm -hmm. because they know him. Like, that's all, all a character letter is, is yeah. what has your experience uh, been with this person? That whole that whole 70s show thing, it's not just Danny Danny Masterson. They might be coming after the whole the whole squad, bro. Yeah, I saw it. They were just all partiers. They were all like running the LA party scene back yeah. in the day because they were young, attractive uh, superstars <sighs> for this incredibly popular show. But how does this turn into that is what I'm saying, Shows. Don't you think this is a fucked up world we live in Bro, this, where this, I can understand mm -hmm. them having backlash because they wrote the letter, but I also feel like if they wanted to write the letter on behalf of their friend, that's that's their right you too. Didn't, you didn't see what else happened? I saw, I saw no, what I'm saying. The, what, what, what the girl said. What girl? The girl, one of the accused, one of the accusers, right? You can find this. I think she's on Twitter basically saying, uh, how dare you write that letter knowing, you know that I have that, I'm aware of that secret that you and Danny kept. And- uh, Who is the girls? Who are the girls? I don't know. Oh. But he's like, I'm aware of that secret that, you know, that you and Danny kept. And then uh, he's like, she's like, that secret that took place on this date, 
right? And on that date, uh, Ashton Kutcher's ex-girlfriend was killed. What? Son, this shit gets deep, my boy. This shit gets deep. What the So fuck? she's implying that either Ashton was aware of or killed his ex that was killed, and Danny and Ashton were somehow involved in it. Shit, I know Ashton wishing he was getting punked right now. Son. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. And then did you see the old uh, uh, late night show with Rosie O'Donnell? I saw video? that. That I saw shit that. was crazy. I saw that. I saw it. But that's what I, that, that's what I was alluding to. I was talking about that type of shit. Like, how does this turn into everybody digging up all this old footage? Oh, of oh because what happens is Danny Masterson isn't, Big enough or famous enough anymore? Never heard of him. Exactly. To, <laughs> Tell this shit. So what they want is so let's say that there's quote unquote justice for Danny Masterson. Yeah. The more popular and famous person that you can bring into this trial, the more that illuminates what's going on. But the guy's getting thirty years. It's over. Of course, but they want more. Mm. Hey, you ruined my life. So I'm going to ruin every, not only, I'm not ruined, I'm going to justifiably take your life from you because what you've done to me and all the people around you that helped you because this has been, what, 12 years since it happened or something like that? Yeah. This trial's been going on forever. <laughs> really? And these women that were on the trial, they had like either threats made against them. I think one of their cats was poisoned or some shit. What and the fuck? They're alleging that the Church of Scientology was basically stepping in and trying to intimidate them on behalf of Danny Masterson. Son, this shit, the, look, there is no uh, empirical, uh, if, correct me if I'm using the right word, there's no empirical evidence of what happened, right? This is apparently so far for what the public knows. Mm -hmm. This is like hearsay evidence, mm -hmm. right? And the jury convicted, I believe based on that, based on what the public knows, maybe the jury knew more, maybe there's more information on the trial. But he got more time than Harvey Weinstein got. He got more time than Bill yeah, Cosby got. He yeah. got 30 to life for a trial that there's no empirical evidence of what has happened. Now, to, that the public knows about. Within the trial, maybe there is. he had two, he had two charges, right? Two different girls, and I think yeah. one was taken away. One, I believe, was a girl said that he did it while she was sleeping, yeah. and then they ended up, well, what is the whole thing? Um, it was actually his girlfriend at the time. Okay. So they were dating, and she claims that he did something while she was sleeping. And then, um, so that one they threw away because they're they like, continued oh, dating stayed afterwards. with him after the fact. Yeah. Which doesn't Yikes. mean anything. Yeah, that don't mean shit. But Lord at the mercy. same time, they weren't convinced. But the other two girls who went through, so there's a lot of weird stuff about this. This almost feels like a warning shot being sent either at Scientology or- What does Scientology have to do with this? School me on that. What is Danny Masterson is a like high-ranking Scientologist, and he's been in it for, for years. And Scientology- But why would, people, what, what, why would people have something against Scientology? Well, Scientology has been known to protect people's uh, sexuality that are you know big public figures. Got you, got you, got it's you. It's been known to protect people who have been involved in criminal activity that are public fi figures. So if you look at a lot of these Scientologists, you know, the ones that are like rumored gay, for example, all of a sudden Scientology makes sure that that's not possible. They might even hook you up with a wife so that, you know, the public image of you can look like you're part of this, mm -hmm. you know, wholesome, pure, traditional family. Uh, that there was rumors about Smith, there's rumors about Tom Cruise, the goat, there's rumors about uh, Saturday Night Fever, John Travolta. And one of the victims, she was saying that she was being followed, she was being intimidated. She was like, yeah. that, like Andrew said, one of the cats got poisoned or something like that. So, so what's the what's Scientology the, it, holds down his people, bro? Blood in. So you're basically saying that uh, this is a shot to say we are not protecting y'all Scientologists no more. All of y'all can get it, basically. It, maybe I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I, it seems like a message has been sent here, and. I don't know if the case is more open and shut, but if the case is taking 12 years to try, you would know more. If it's taking this long to try, it's it seems to me it's not as open and shut. He was on trial for 12 years? Or it happened or did 12 it happen years 12 ago? Yeah, it happened like, like 12 years ago. But so they tried it one time and then he it was a hung jury. So they had to try it again. And then this time it's worked. Yes. This so time. he's just been prolonging this. Yeah. And it's like, Basically, the judge yeah, is going says, to give you- It says he was found you. guilty in May at a retrial after the first jury was unable to reach a verdict in 2022. Yeah. And he was deemed a flight risk till he was taken into prison custody. Hmm. And so the judges typically will give you more time depending on oh, yeah. how, like, um, 
how good of a person he deems you are. So the fact that you are accused of raping these women, they have enough evidence to convict you. And then on top of that, you try to intimidate the witnesses after the fact. That and you might be a flight uh, room. That's, that's what I'm going to look at you. Uh, 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 and it says the actor was convicted after but, three women sorry, testified sorry. that he had sexually assaulted them but in o, from 01 to 03. Weinstein hired the fucking, um, the Mossad spies or whatever. No, but he hired like actual professional intelligence agencies to go dig up dirt on these women and I think intimidate them. So like, it's just peculiar to me. This is- this, Especially when it says the charges shit. bought by the third accuser were declared a mistrial and prosecutors said they do not plan to retry the case. So why, why are they bringing up the old footage from Rosie O'Donnell with Ashton? Well, I think they're just trying to bring as many famous people into it because that will shed the most light on the case. But and I don't I think, what, but, but I don't I don't see what the Ashton thing and so Ashton wrote that letter saying like oh he's, he's a such guy. a good guy and then now people are saying hey but look at what the climate was around the people in this show yeah but okay play the clip Taylor find that Ashton clip and play that clip. She was, she was 14, 14 when we started the show. I was like 19, right? Right. And they're like, okay, you guys are going to be making out in the scene. And I'm like thinking, like, we need to like a scene. How old is Ashton here? So 19. But this isn't, yeah. Okay, so that this whoever posted this said Athen Kutcher is a pedophile. He groomed his current wife Mila Kunis since she was 14 years old. What are the thoughts? I mean, that would be the worst case scenario. What does this, what does this got to do? Oh, I saw this one from Punked. I saw this. Play this one, Taylor. Hillary Joff is in Lizzie McGuire. She also has an album out. Um, she's going to be in a movie called Cheaper by the Dozen. And she's one of the girls that we're all waiting for to turn 18, along with the Olsen twins. Any 15-year-old... All right, this is what I think, man. Hmm. I think that... We got to get the goddamn, uh, the TVA to just go prune these timelines, bro. <laughs> we just got to, like, like that, we just got to get rid of all of this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of this shit from the, 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 the 80s to the 90s to the early 2000s. You just got to get rid of all of it. You know? Yeah. None of it ever, none of it has aged well. Yeah. None of it. But here's the thing that I always keep saying about all of this stuff. None of this stuff is a secret. This is the Rosie O'Donnell show, and this was punked on MTV. Yeah. You, you don't get much bigger when it comes to television. So I know you're pointing the finger at Ashton, but what about the producers? What about the fucking writers? Yeah. Because somebody wrote that joke for Ashton Kutcher. What about the host? Nobody pushed back on any of this shit in real time. We just, mm. it just it just happened. It broadcasted to everybody. Mm. There was no backlash to it. No nothing. Like there's a lot of people. If you want to hold people accountable, As, you can't just hold the talent accountable, y'all. Yeah, you know what's interesting? It's like at the time, it was actually quite. I, we look at it now. We're like, this is fucking disgusting. This is horrible. At the time, it was a quite common joke to be made. Like people would say that about Britney Spears all the time. Britney Spears had the the what's it called video? Hit Which me one? Baby one more Hit time. me baby one more time. And they're just people on TRL openly going, oh, TikTok, when it's time. Yeah. So I think now we're looking back at it going, this is fucking horrendous. How the what hell was, you what do the this? fuck was wrong with us, man? Yo. I just, you know, and it's like, look, man, we all come from that era where we would see stuff like that and wouldn't think anything of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like, 
When you see this stuff being bought back up and people are trying to put, you know, things together to p paint a picture of a person, that's not accurate. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. the reality is if you go back to that time, sadly, everybody was making those kind of jokes. Yeah. You know? And, and even and to go back to the kiss with Ashton and, and uh, what's her name? Mila. Mila. Yeah. 19 and 14. Once again, that scene had to be directed. Hmm. That scene had to be produced. Yeah. Nobody says, hey, uh, Ashton's 19, she's 14. How old was she supposed to be on the show? I don't, I don't know. It's actually true. Yeah, she lied about her age. Taylor said she lied about her age. What do you mean she lied? She couldn't, she couldn't have lied about her age. She lied about her age when she was auditioning, and then when she went to go sign the contract, allegedly, she said, actually, I'm, I'm 14. I'm not whatever. And they were like, well, we like her so much, we want to keep her. Get the fuck out of here. So who's liable in a situation like that? I think you have to make her parent. I mean, like, listen, her parents are a little bit liable. They know they're signing her up for a role that she's going to have to be making out with. Like, there's a sexual part of the role, yeah. and she's going to be sexual with adults because I don't know if kids are even allowed to be sexual on TV. So that is a little peculiar one. One, they should have never hired her if they knew an underage girl was going to have to be sexual on the show. But two, yeah. if her parents are involved, they should never be putting her out for a role that they know that she would have to do sexual things. Like, that's just weird. Like, I would— yeah. Hollywood, bro. Yo, but and that's the thing. Hollywood is— But didn't they get married years, years later? Well, because then he with Demi Moore or somebody. So that's the thing. He probably dated Demi Moore. Like, yo, if I if I marry this old woman, nobody will ever think anything about it. And then that kind of removes the stink of the, the I like young girl shit. But do you? But, but my point with that is, if they got married years, years later, yeah. how old was she when they got married? I'm so confused, man. Yeah. What the fuck? This says you are watching in the crease TV. What is this? The only thing I don't like, man, is when the internet takes things that don't have anything to do with each other and tries to combine them. Danny Madison is the person who got convicted for 30 years. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Ashton and uh, Mila wrote a character letter, you know, for Danny because the family asked him to. Why are you all of a sudden trying to make it seem like Ashton well, why is... Why would they do that, though? I, why would you write a character letter? It's like, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 I can see both ways. I can see both sides. Though. Okay, break that down for me. No, I'm just saying I can see if both sides. Any one of y'all, like, I'm writing a character letter. Yeah. Because it's like, I didn't know you were doing that whatever shit that he got convicted for. But now you but, know. But now I know, so I'm gonna be like, "Hey, the person I knew was a good dude." Mm. Yeah, but I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't write asking for any kind of leniency, though. But if you asked me, if somebody said to me, you know, what, what, what did you think of Andrew or what did you think of Alex? I'm going to talk about my experiences that's with it. them. Yeah, I wouldn't even have a problem writing a letter for that. But I'm not going to ask for leniency. So what? But the hard part is yeah. that what he got convicted of. Because now that changes. You're, then now you're not even that person that I. But well, that's you why were. you don't ask for leniency. I'm not asking that's, the judge. I'm not asking uh, the judge to do so, nothing. Like, so yeah, let's 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 look at it. This is interesting. If y'all tell me you're innocent, like let's say you say I had a friend of mine who killed somebody, right? And he like, if he he told me he's like I didn't do it, or that he went to prison for doing it. He told me he didn't do it. That's all you gotta tell me. I trust you. You're my friend. You're gonna tell me the truth. I'll write a letter saying no. This is not the guy who would never do it. Writing a letter for leniency means he did it, but he was good to me. That's fucking weird. Exactly. Writing the letter of there's no way he did it. This is bullshit. I got my boys back. I know he would never do it. They're trying to you know get money out of him or they're trying to and do that. And you have the right to believe that. Hell yeah. You because, have the right to believe that. But assuming, but basically writing a letter going, hey, he fucking these girls, but be a little bit leaning on him because he's been a good guy to me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't. I couldn't ask. For, I wouldn't ask for leniency. And once again, even if I, if, right, even, even, even if all the evidence says you did it, and I thought you did it, all I can talk about is my time with you. Mm. I can't speak on nothing else. Yeah. If somebody says, oh, I mean, what did you think of X, Y, and Z? Did you see anything? I'm like, nah, I, I never saw that. Like. That's my people's blah, 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 whatever, whatever. But anything else that got to do with the case, I can't speak to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I damn sure can't ask for no leniency. Asking for leniency is wild. Crazy. 
Because that's she, where he, that's where your point. Crazy. You're saying like you're saying you're admitting like, oh no, nah, I, I think I guess he did, he did it. it. Yeah. I guess he did it. But don't throw him away forever. Don't throw him for too long. He was nice to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's and crazy. and maybe yeah. maybe it wasn't a leniency letter. Maybe it was a character letter and they're throwing leniency in. Like maybe when they were asked, it maybe. was like, yo, can you just say who this person is? Like he's saying he didn't do it and they're accusing maybe. him of something he didn't do. And they're like, of course, I'd love to say it because that's your friend. You're not going to believe your friend is guilty if that's really the homie. Yeah, we saw we saw that recently too with uh, Iggy Azalea and Tory Lanez, right? Because Iggy Azalea wrote a letter for Tory Lanez Boom. asking for leniency. I, you know, I, you, I, I, I can't, I couldn't ask for leniency. All I, all I could do is simply talk about my experiences, which said person. Because just because you and a person are cool doesn't mean that a person isn't over here doing some wild shit or has was over here has has done some wild shit. Only thing I can do is speak to my experiences. Bro, if somebody to that said person. Akash shot somebody, and Akash like, I'm, it's not me. I'm being set up. It's not. I would never do it. I, I got to hear write, more. I would have to hear more. <laughs> I, would, I would have to. I personally would have to hear more. Why, 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 why? I just think Akash has that in him. He has the ability to I definitely so. do. We okay. all do, though. Shoot I mean, somebody. For the right reasons. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're on my lawn. <laughs> that happened. They're, it's, you know what I mean? <laughs> that happened in Florida recently. Really? 62 year old guy got arrested, pulled a gun out on two construction workers. Told him, don't walk on my fucking lawn. Don't walk on my lawn. Don't yo. walk on the lawn. He pulled the, pulled the hammer out on, on him. Don't which is crazy me. to do in Florida, though. Because in Florida, somebody could pull, everybody got a gun, could pull a hammer back out on you and shoot you. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. dying over no grass. It, nah, maybe. Yeah, I'm not dying over no grass, bro. Maybe, though. Just get the fuck off my lawn. You know what I mean? That's it. And then you about, you 62 about to go to prison? Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Trying to protect your grass. Now you got to go protect your ass? You got yeah. it. Come on, man. You got, and you don't have the hammer, bro. You don't got the fucking hammer. Yeah. You don't got the hammer. I don't know, man. Uh, I wish everybody the best in this situation, man. It's just a very, very strange world we live in, and I really don't except like... Danny. Yeah, except Danny. Except Danny. Oh, Masters. yeah, Danny. I mean, dude, he, he's, he's gone. He's yeah. doing 30 years. The only, the only thing I would say is I just don't like when people start... Pulling things from back in the day to try to paint a picture and a narrative yep. of of what an individual is now. And it's so easy to just take little it, excerpts uh, from the internet, especially for somebody who's been publicly, you know, involved in the internet or television for 20, 30 years. And you go through all those interviews, you're going to be able to find something to create whatever narrative. Especially you want. in the world of entertainment. 100%. We were out of our fucking minds. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We were all batshit crazy. And it's always funny when this stuff like this pops up because you just be looking like, man. Yeah. What a time to be alive. Mm. And we didn't get to fucking really partake in that shit, Schultz. No, we didn't. We didn't get to live in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s where you could really get on TV and, just and say some out. wild. Wow. Shit. I mean, we were wild in guy code. We were wild. Listen, that's another thing. We were wild in guy code to the point where now, and how long ago was that? They got take down episodes. 10 years ago, 11 years ago, they're taking episodes now. Yeah. This, I, it, it, I just can't wait to see what is offensive 10 years from now. I want to know what we're doing and saying right now, or just what people are doing and saying right now, that 10 years from now, people are going to be like, ah, nah, that's not acceptable. Do you think eventually the pendulum just goes the other way? Where it's like you could say anything. I think things are. I think it's already trending that way right now. But we we got to learn, and I'm gonna tell you what I mean by okay. that. I agree with you. Yeah. The pendulum will ultimately swing back when people don't give a fuck no more. They're like fuck it. But we have to keep in mind if we care. Twenty years from now, it's gonna swing back to this shit. <laughs> it's gonna swing back to what we yeah. just been dealing with the past five or six years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you kind of got to be careful about. Just how you move now. I do wish that. I, I say that all the time. Though. I do wish I uh, understood the power of the microphone and stuff back then. Because we was just all going for it. You That's know what I'm saying? Thing. You just being loud so you get attention in the beginning. It's That's so it. hard for anybody you know to know listen I mean? to you at all. And, yeah. and, it, and it wasn't even, I don't even think we were trying to get attention. Like, you know, nowadays, you know, you see these people online, they're doing things for attention. We were... Trying to outdo each other. That's true. Very competitive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yo, they, they would play shit back. That's what Schultz and Gabriel said. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> or this with Tuval and Charlemagne. So everybody was going yeah. for it. It, it, it. And on Twitter, oh my God. Yeah, Twitter was crazy. Twitter was the wild, was wild yeah, west. Yeah, 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 you hear me? Yeah. The shit that uh, the, the hashtags people would come up with. I will say though, even then though, there was certain shit I'd see and I'd be like, I ain't participating in that yeah, one. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. <laughs> that, they one... should delete all tweets older than a year. I agree with you. Why do we need anything more I, than I agree old? with you. Because a lot of that shit out of context just confuses exactly. motherfuckers. Exactly, delete it. I think they should delete all content, man. Ooh. And the reason I say that is because, like, there's certain people, right? Like, like let's just say you have a, 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 an audience now. People swear by things that you say, but then they go back 15, 20 years ago. You ain't feeling like that no more. Mm. You don't believe that anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, remember Malcolm Gladwell when we had him on Brilliant Idiots one time? Malcolm Gladwell said he doesn't even um, believe what's in a lot of his books anymore. Bro, that shit pissed me off. It hurt my fucking feelings. Yeah, we read all these goddamn books. I'm, you know, regurgitating all this information, these studies to all these people. And he came on, he was like, yeah, you know, some of that shit was, was made up. I don't, he didn't say it was made up. He didn't say, I don't believe it Not no more. Not made up, yeah. He's yeah, like, I got new information. I got new information. But here's the thing with that. He's absolutely positively right, but everybody's uh, at different places in their journey. Right. So the way the outliers hit us 15 years ago, it would hit somebody like that now. Right. You know what I'm saying? The way David and Goliath hit us a decade ago, it would hit somebody like that now. Yep. You know what I mean? Now, yep. Malcolm might be on something else, but those books still stand the test of time, and yeah. people can go back and read those. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that every time I'm writing a new book now, and I feel that way. What are you writing about? I don't want to say yet, but I will tell you one thing that I'm exploring. In my first book, one of my rules is live your truth so nobody can use your truth against you. The Eminem and Eight Mile Theory. Are you gonna have? Um, are you gonna have Candace do the opening? Candace Owens? No. <laughs> 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 the, the other you, Candace. No, if you don't, get, if you don't get the person yeah, after yeah, the Friday, after, a, like you know what I'm saying. If you gotta say Candace, I'd be like Candace Owens. I'm not saying Candace who. I already know, I know what the fuck is going on. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> so after I say Candace Owens, you gotta be like, no, can this dick go in your mouth or whatever the fuck you was gonna say? Oh, that's where you're going. With? <laughs> All right, let's do it again. Okay. Okay. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. All right. Okay. No, no, dude. Ask me if I'm gonna have Candace do it. No, dude. Okay. No, dude. What? No, dude. <laughs> Come on, dude. But that's one of the chapters, you know, in my first book, Live Your Truth so Nobody Can Use Your Truth Against You, the Eminem and Eight Mile Theory. And that was basically always put your own shit out there. You yeah. know what I mean? Whatever flaw, whatever, you know, whatever it is, whatever mistake you made, always put that out there so nobody can use it against you. Is is Moreau helping you with it? Yeah, of course. Okay. But here's the thing about that, right? What? I don't know if I believe that anymore. What? You know, there's another Moreau you could you could get to help on if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Moreau is dead. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, oh Chris, my point oh, is, Chris. I don't know if I feel like that no more. You don't know if you feel like what? Live your truth, so nobody can use your truth against oh, you. I feel like we're in an era where that's all people do. That you is know what true. I'm saying? That is 100 percent true. All they true. do is use. They will use your weakest, mo most vulnerable moments that's against it. you. Well, absolutely, that's it. Absolutely. They'll yeah. use that shit against you. Some shit you said. Some shit you you know wrote about. They will use it against you. Like I'm yeah. the one who told y'all this shit, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Way worse if they find that out without you telling them first. You think so? You can get I ahead don't know, of it. Bro. You can get ahead of it, but at the same time, um, when they're painting a narrative like we just saw was happening with Ashen. And just taking little excerpts from the internet, something you wrote, yeah. et cetera, it's very easy to make a character or a person that you do not know personally look 100% a certain way. And whether you get ahead of it or not, when they string together five or six That's old things, point. look what they did with, I mean, Biden, I believe, likes to smell kids, but like 
they basically took every time it happened and put it together. And my mind immediately was like, oh, this is a creepy old motherfucker smelling kids. And you know what's crazy about that? Biden has been alive 117 years. <laughs> think you know about what I'm saying? That. You think take about four that. times that he, that he- We should have some black and white, <laughs> right? Like, 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 you just like, started smelling like, when color yeah, came I, out? But, but you can literally take two clips, three clips, That's put them together takes. and say, this is who this individual is. Yeah. And yeah. what you say, Al, you said something else, Alex. You said- no, I said if they find that in your dirt or whatever they Okay, is, I'm going to tell you why I disagree with that. Or you tell that. them it's work. I'll tell you why I disagree with that. Because they're not finding anything. This shit exists. Finding is like, yeah. I wouldn't search for it. They hid this shit away. It's, finding is not, oh my God, it's on YouTube. I discovered it on YouTube. Oh my God, it was on an old podcast. This was out in the open. None yeah. of this shit is being hidden. Ashton Kutcher was on punked when he said this shit. Yeah. Ashton Kutcher was, they were on Rosie O'Donnell. This is prime time, daytime people, television. People don't know this also, but like all these shows, you're like you said, do have writers. There's yes. probably a writer that was like, hey, this is your script. This is your setup for the Yo, next show. Segment. How about this? Yeah. We, 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 we can take it a step further. Yeah, you got writers, you got producers, directors. They got standards and practices. Standards and practices got, looked at the jokes yes. and was like, hey, this, this is, is fine. fine. Put it out there. It's really interesting. Yeah, so I actually kind of feel the same way about like what happened with Travis Scott, where it's just like so many people were making money Come off on, of man. that concert, right? Like the, the obviously the tragic concert. It's like we're putting all the blame on Travis. Travis paid security. He paid the venue. He rented out all these different things for security protocols. And now I understand he throws these ragers and wants people to go hard and wants people to dance, but – there are people he's paying to be responsible that are aware of what type of show he has. A lot of people had to fail at their job for a situation but like exactly. that. Exactly. So it's like, and, and then we put all the blame on that person because obviously that's the biggest person, and there's, uh, and, and you're angry. You have this. There's the loss. Anytime you experience loss, or anytime you experience, you know, some sort of punishment, you want that revenge. You want that payback, and rightfully so. I yeah. get that. But I do have empathy for Travis, where it's like, bro, I, I, I did all the things you're supposed to do. I didn't ask the venue to not be safe. You know what I, I mean? I, like, I, I, I guess that's the problem I have with the court of public opinion and social media. It's always about the celebrity. Whoever's mm -hmm. the celebrity, who's ever the biggest name is going to get, gonna get the brunt. It too. But, but, but none of us are taking a step back to really have conversations about any of this shit. We still, as a collective society, have not had a conversation about old content. Mm -hmm. We haven't. Yeah. We, still, we still have not had a conversation about, damn, what were we doing in the 90s? I got yeah. a friend, your friend too, who actually was doing a show. I think the show was called Cancelled. And they were going to explore all of the old content and, you know, all of the old things that we used to do and yeah. what was acceptable then, what's not acceptable now. He couldn't get one person to sit down and do it. Hell no. <laughs> not Hell one. No. And the, the, I, the, the premise is brilliant. I'm, yeah. the, I'm not even describing it as good as Nobody good wants as that action. Not one no. person wanted to sit down and do it. And this ain't, this ain't, the person I'm talking about is somebody that we all know, love, has been responsible for one of the greatest shows of all time. Couldn't get one person to sit down and do it because nobody wanted any parts of that shit. They're like, hell no. Have you ever seen The Morning Show on Apple Plus? No, I heard about it. Though. So they explore the Me Too era and trying to really dive into the nuance of it mm -hmm. because there was that first wave where they took out like the real predators and then there was kind of the second wave where they were just like going after people that, yeah, it was gray area stuff. And so... I think if somebody did a show like that on content, where it's like you're doing it in a nuanced way, but you don't have to actually talk about specific people and events, that would be a better way to do it. I think you got to talk about specific people and events, but I, we would have to all collectively promise not to fucking shoot at each other. Yeah, but so all this shit is a circular firing squad. Yeah. So the morning show, they do it where it's like, you know what event they're talking about, like um, that news anchor that he had the door that locks or whatever the case is. So oh, it's like Matt they, Lauer. Matt, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's like they do stuff like that, but they're not saying this is Matt Lauer or this is exactly what happened. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, doing it in that way so then you could really talk about all the shit we know just content but yeah, yeah, not yeah. a specific person because nobody's going to want to take that heat yeah man I because the only reason I but, but you know what though I do think things have changed and what I mean by that is I think corporate America and even like government officials and stuff they know they can't really stand by a lot of this old stuff that comes out because everybody got something 
So if I if 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 I if I if I'm the person that jumps out there every single time something like this happens, eventually it's gonna be you or somebody you love or yeah. somebody you fuck with. You saw that during the last election. Oh, Donald Trump grabbed him by the pussy. Oh, Donald yeah. Trump got sexual accusers. Well, Trump's like, okay, so did Clinton. You know, then yeah. they're like, oh, so does Biden. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. just like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's what made everybody be like, uh, we can't you we can't weaponize that one. They were weaponizing it. That's my that's yeah. my point. Same thing happened with Bendo, too. <laughs> <laughs> Man, go to commercial. Go to fucking commercial, man. He's trying to look so fucking sincere, too. Same thing happened with Bendo. Nobody's biting on that one, Schultz. Okay? This guy is so crazy, man. Uh, let's stop and pay some bills, man. Salute to Hero Bread. Hero Bread makes sliced breads, buns, and tortillas that are available on Hero.co and Amazon. Hero has fewer calories than the leading national brand with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. It's soft, fluffy, and delicious, but it's also high in fiber with ultra-low net carbs and zero grams of sugar per slice. Right now, Hero Bread is offering our listeners 10% off their first order. Just go to Hero.co and use our code IDIOTS to save on Hero Bread today. That's Hero, H-E-R-O dot C-O to save. 10% today, okay? And Brilliant Idiots is also brought to you by Talkspace. Y'all know I love Talkspace, man. Uh, salute to Talkspace. Talkspace, y'all need to be at my Mental Wealth Expo on October 7th, man, my third annual Mental Wealth Expo. It is a day of mental health education and healing. Talkspace, y'all need to be there giving uh, the people who attend the Mental Wealth Expo, some free talk space. You know it's a free event. Uh, last year we had like 3,000 people. I'm sure that we'll be doing around that same number this year. But talk space, y'all need to be there. But I do want to thank y'all for always sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots podcast, man. Do you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them or afford them? Try Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace is made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. Sometimes people wait until something bad happens to talk to a therapist. Why wait? Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Getting started is the important part. Talkspace makes it easy and affordable. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. With virtual sessions, there's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up child care in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made easy. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest in the in bank grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. Talkspace is affordable and in network with most major insurers, okay? As a listener to the Brilliant Idiots podcast, you'll get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to match with a licensed therapist today. Go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $80 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots this episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. I'm telling you, if you want to have a business, you need a place for it on the internet to make it official, to make it real. You would not trust a business if it didn't have a website, and that is exactly what Squarespace is going to help you do, okay? They're going to make you have a trustable, valid business. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. They have these member areas, and you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics. Measure the impact of every cent. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are the most effective. You can improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. So head to squarespace.com idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch 
Use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash IDIOT with the offer code IDIOT for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Church announcement. Yo, uh, England. We're adding another show in Manchester. Manchester, Manchester, Manchester. It's October 15th. Okay, matinee show, 4 p.m. Get out there. We are not adding another show in London. It's just going to be the Royal Albert. I know London's been asking like crazy. You know how hard it is to get that fucking venue? That's an impossible venue to get, Mm. okay? So we were lucky enough, okay, to get that venue. But there are no more days that we can have that this time around. So London and the surrounding areas, drive up or take the train up to Manchester, uh, October 15th. Those tickets are on sale right now. The pre-sale is right now. Use the promo code uh, Andrew at theandrewschultz.com. Go grab those. Thank you guys so much. We just uh, released more seats for Dublin. This is fucking insane. We're doing the three arena in Dublin, and I didn't think that we were going to be able to release the top tier. Now we're releasing the fucking top tier of the arena. It's unbelievable. So those are just up right there. Uh, Thank you guys so much. Abu Dhabi sold out. Uh, Scotland sold out. London sold out. Amsterdam both shows sold out. Um, International Hezzy. Bro, we're out here, man. I mean, Sydney, we added more sh- uh, another show in Sydney at the Super Aware Theater. Um, uh, we added more seats in uh, Brisbane. We added more seats in uh, in Melbourne. Thank you guys so much. These are fucking Did you insane. envision this? I envisioned it, but it's also cool to see it happening. You envisioned it internationally? The first, the first thing I like wrote down when I was like, I want to do this there, I want to, I was like, I want to sell out stadiums and arenas wow. in comedy. So it's awesome to see, to do it, but you still, it's an un, it's unreal. It, it, it hasn't kicked in yet. Yeah. It just hasn't kicked in. I mean, I saw that shit. I, I remember telling you, you're going to be bigger than, uh, what was the guy's name? Russell. Oh, Russell Peters. Russell Peters. Yo, shout out to Russell, man. Because Russell, salute to Russell. Because Russell, I don't know if people remember. I don't know if it's still the same, but there was a period where Russell was the biggest comedian in the, the world, biggest without touring a, comic in the world. Just an absolute. And, and, and people monster. may not have necessarily known who he was, but for whatever reason, he had this huge fan base internationally. He can do these unbelievable impressions, and he has great cultural awareness. And he would, he basically like started stand up comedy in a lot of places in the world. Like mm-hmm. they didn't watch it or really know about it to the level they know about it now until they saw him. He's like a, like a, he's like the Christopher Columbus of stand up. Wow. Yeah. In the best way. Yeah. Uh, if, <laughs> there, if there is a best way, I get what you're saying though. Man. But for real, for real, for real, yeah. Nah, it's Luther Russell Peters. Um, my church announcements are simple. Make sure you go get a leash, Unleash for Love. On Audible, it's available right now. Uh, uh, audio romantic scripted comedy from uh, myself and Kevin Hart's company, SBH Production, stars Alicia Renee and Pretty V and uh, Logan Browning and Jess Hilarious and uh, Portia Williams, Giselle Bryant, uh, Kadeem Hardison and Jasmine Guy play Alicia's parents. So that's available on Audible right now. Make sure y'all keep uh, ranking and reviewing that one. Um, I gotta salute uh, Doug Melville. Invisible Generals. That is a book that is coming out uh, on my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing. It'll be available this fall. Thank you to everybody that's been pre-ordering that. Kirkus Reviews gave Invisible Generals a phenomenal, a phenomenal review. Uh, the, the word that they use in the book world is Kirkus Reviews raved about Invisible Generals, man. So um, make sure you go check that out. And make sure you're at my third annual Mental Wealth Expo, October 7th at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. It is a free event. Uh, We have some of your favorite therapists and psychiatrists, some of the best therapists and psychiatrists, as well as some some mental health advocates and uh, mental health experts there, Dr. Alfie Breland Noble, um, my man Elliot Connie, who's a psychotherapist, Dr. Jay Barnett, uh, Michelle, Williams, salute to the good sister Michelle Williams from Destiny's Child and the Checking In podcast on the Black Effect. She'll be there. Angela Rye will be there. Just, just pull up, man. It's a day of panels and mental health education and healing. We had a guy who's actually on a panel this year. His name is Justin Little. He called the Breakfast Club this morning and was talking about how coming to the Mental Health Expo a couple years ago saved his life. Mm. And so, you know, now he's on a panel you know, on the stage this year talking about his experience. And I mean, literally, that's that's what I created the event for. I created the event for people to get started on their healing journey, man. So it's a free event. 
Saturday, October 7th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., Marriott Marquis in Times Square. Just go to mentalwealthexpo.com. Now let's get back to the show. Jonathan Majors broke up a high school fight at an in and out in Hollywood. Why am I just hearing about this story? Jonathan Majors stopped a high school fight while satisfying his craving for in and out The actor was spotted in West Hollywood on Monday, intervening in a fight between two girls. Jonathan <laughs> intervened in the brawl to prevent anyone from getting hurt, although he was unsure about the cause. Jonathan said he hoped the girls were okay after the fight and had some encouraging words for them. Uh, as we know, Jonathan is in the middle of his own legal battle after an accused him of assault, aggravated harassment, attempted assault, and harassment. Mm -hmm. After allegedly putting hands on her in a taxi, he's denying the accusation. The case has been pushed back twice already. Uh, I heard the young lady had left the country. I don't know what the hell's oh, going really? on. Yeah, they, they keep pushing the case back, which lets me know they probably don't have much of a case. Oh. Which is why they keep pushing it back, you know? Or, or couldn't his team be pushing it back? No, he's, he's showing up to court. He's been to court twice. Every time you go to court, they push it back. So they pushed it back again to Friday, September 15th. And then slide this? Huh? Slide this. <laughs> Shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> you know the funny thing about shit like this, though? We live in a world now where this probably absolutely positively happened. Jonathan Majors probably broke up two high school kids fighting because I can show you a place in New Jersey right now. I can drive by there right now. Guaranteed fight? Guaranteed those high school kids is out there fighting. Really? Right what? now. Like What's... literally right now. I can show you. It's a, it's a, it's a little uh, deli that they all go to after school. And what's the, uh, what's the name of the school? Not, I, I really I, don't know. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I don't know. It's, just, it's in T-neck though. But... My point is, this probably really happened, it's fine. but people will see this. <laughs> T-neck does sound crazy. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you just, just, what is T-neck? Yeah. You just had me a nice iced tea, and then I put that cold tongue on your cock. Yo, son, <laughs> what is that? I don't think you get how it goes. <laughs> Boy, you guys know what y'all was thinking? Oh, I'm sorry. Listen. <laughs> Yo, Taylor's <laughs> getting upset. Taylor don't like these gay jokes. You don't, you don't around, listen to these gay jokes. Taylor's Taylor. sitting around thinking, this is why I don't have a man, because I don't think of shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Probably, so, too. Just, Yo, go down to Tampa, hang out with your friend Masha, or whatever her fucking name is. Her name's... Uh, Masha? Taylor. Her name's Taylor, too, allegedly. Masha <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, this Jonathan Major shit probably is real, but people think it's fake. You think it was like set up so That's he could look like think. a good guy? You know what I'm saying? But I guarantee you it was real, but people probably thought it was fake. Yeah, I mean, I get that too. Like, I feel like that every time there's some sort of like a... Uh, every time there's some sort of crazy... Uh, government interference on something, I'm always like a little bit skeptical. I'm yeah. like, well, what's going on? And and we have a right to be skeptical because throughout history there have been so many times where the government has staged these false flags to get us into uh, war or war. anything else. I mean, it's not like they've never lied about war before. Exactly. I wanted to ask you something about government, man. I wanted to ask you this question right here. Nearly half of voters say any 2024 GOP nominee would be better than Biden. Only 39% of voters approve of Biden, and a majority of voters say things in the U.S. are going badly. That's according to CNN. And there's a poll that shows in the general election Trump and Biden are tied. I, think, I think Trump washes him. It's not even close. Damn. Why do you think this is, though? No, no. Let me clarify. I think he washes him if you have to go out and vote. If they let you do the mail-in voting thing again... Mm -hmm. And they mail everybody the ballots, and uh, then maybe Biden can win. But going and taking time out of your day to go vote, nobody's doing that for Biden. Somebody said, and I saw, I don't know if it was on CNN I was watching, they said that the election could literally be decided by the attendance at one Taylor Swift show. <laughs> I'm not even making this shit I up. I hate the world we live in where everybody has to bring some sort of celebrity in. But they literally said the election could be so close that the attendance at one Taylor Swift show could could sway the election, which means like what? 50,000, 80,000 votes? Uh, yeah, I think more like 80 to 100,000. 80,000 yeah. votes. You know what I mean? Why do you think that is, though? 
Is it because Biden's old? I don't know if anybody's voting for Biden. I think they would vote against Trump. But I don't think anybody's like, oh, I love Biden. I love his presidency. I think that he's really cognitively all there and that yeah. he should lead America for the next four years. I don't think there's a human on this planet that believes that. It's really embarrassing. I did Piers Morgan last week, man, and that was one of the questions he asked me. He asked me, he goes, why don't y'all have any more options? Yeah. He was like, why is it, you know, 97-year-old Joe Biden and damn near 90-year-old Trump with 91, you know, criminal charges and yeah. four indictments. Like, why are these your only options? And it's just like, you know, sometimes you want to tell people from other countries, mind their own goddamn business. Yeah, mind your business. It's got nothing to do with you. But the reality is you got to admit that they're right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I, I've thought it about sucks this. that that's all we got is that, those two options. I think, the, I think the reason why it is is because Nobody with their life ahead of them would put themselves and their family through the scrutiny that being or trying to be president mm -hmm. puts you under, right? You want to talk about bringing up old tweets. Mm. You want to talk about bringing up old interviews. I think we, Trump obliterated that, though. Well, Trump might have, but there are other people who really have a squeaky clean reputation, and all of a sudden, this is going to be brought up. Their family's going to be run through the ringer. Their kids are going to be run through the ringer. I don't ringer. think they like, care no more, Schultz. You don't think they care about their family? No, no. I think they care, but I'm talking about the general public. Once you realize that the general public doesn't give a fuck as much as you think they do, no, they, you're fine. Okay, okay. They might not give a fuck, meaning like they're not going to hold you to that for the rest of your life, but you might not want to re relive these oh, narratives yeah, that yeah, they're yeah, bringing yeah, yeah. up. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. you might not, like you've become this different person than who you were in, let's say, college or yeah. something like that. And they're going to bring that up and try to use it to like taint the perception of you. And your family might not want to go through that. Your, yeah. your, your kids' friends are going to judge your, your, their dad. Like, you're really making everybody's life hard. So I think what happens is it's only worth it. Also, America's dope when you're rich and you're not president. Being president sucks. So, like, you have to be, like, a real bona fide sociopath to do it when you're young or— Think you can really change something. Yes, and but when you're rich in America, it's fucking cool, man. You're taking vacations, you're indulging in the nicest, uh, you know, restaurants, uh, hotels, nature. Like but life is good. But Trump was rich. But Trump was eighty. So uh, that's the other part Trump of the point. Trump was also I'm a make. narcissist. But no, being well, rich wasn't enough for him. Well, and that's also possibly true. But also being rich was enough. I don't think Trump would have done it at fifty or sixty because he's like. My life is great. I'm still doing more. I've still got more to build. I haven't told you one of my billionaire friends told me about that. What did he say? One of my billionaire friends uh, here in New York said that, and he told me this back in 2016, 2017, he was like, we never respected Trump. We always looked at Trump as a joke. Yep. And he always would try to be in the mix with us, but yep. we never would accept him. So he ran for president, you know, thinking that that was going to get him into the in crowd, and we still look at him as a clown. Mm. Am I off on that, Chris? Chris don't want to talk about it. Chris, <laughs> Chris, get the mic, Chris. Somebody, my, my man told me this like five yeah, years ago. Yeah, I mean, ago. Trump's issue is he was outer barrel, right? Like his father was a developer in Queens. He wanted the acceptance from a certain Manhattan crowd. He never got it. He's looking to make up for it. I guess if you want to do a psychological breakdown of them. And they still don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, even as president, you know they still don't give a fuck. They're saying he overestimated his wealth by $2 billion. No, he lied about his wealth by $2 I billion. Mean, <laughs> like, we got to start using correct language. He lied about point, being worth more than $2 point billion. Point being, if you're a 50-year-old dude, you've got a family, and you're happy and you have money coming in and you're enjoying your life, do you really want to put you and your family through that type of scrutiny? Uh, I don't think you do. Mm. If you're a 75-year-old dude, your kids are already grown, your kids may be already married, uh, they are starting to have families of their own, um, Are you or 70, are you down to go for the mountaintop? You've achieved everything else in life. Hell no. You've got billions. You say hell no, but I think certain ones go, you know what? Fuck it. I actually think I can help the country, even though they might do it for narcissistic or sociopathic reasons. They do believe, I think, you have to be compelled that you can help the country. I don't think it only comes from pure sociopathic narcissism. Well, it might come from that, but I think they convince themselves 
through that sociopathic narcissism that they're doing something beneficial for the country that they love. I promise you at 75, I'm going to be so deep in retirement. That's you. At 75, That's I'm going to have my feet kicked up so much. That, you can't make me feel like a 75-year-old person who's lived a great life is just going to wake up one day and say, I want to do the most stressful job in the world. That's you, though. Some of these people are like, I don't want to stop working. Stopping working is terrifying to me. And you know what? I want to see if I can hold the most powerful position in the world. I don't want it. I don't want to see that happen anymore. That's you. I really don't. I'm sick of all of these old politicians. Like, I'm so over it. Like, I I, I don't know what this country needs. Yeah. But it ain't old politicians, bro. Yeah. I really don't. I, I don't I don't know what this country well, needs. We, we had point. relatively, and I say relatively young presidents recently. I mean, Obama was what? Obama, 50 yeah. when he took office. Bush before him Bush, was also. Yeah, Clinton was young. Yeah, yeah I yeah, mean, if yeah. you look at it, the, the trend towards... Guys running in their late seventies is only recently. Those were some good times, man. Remember those days? <laughs> Remember the Obama years and the Bush years and the Clinton years? Remember when we thought George W. Bush was the Antichrist? Bro. <laughs> you remember? Do you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Just think about that. We thought George W. Bush was the Antichrist. We would trade it all to get George W. Bush back right now. You like now. George? I mean, I didn't like him then. But, but now I, you're like, he's pretty good. Anything's better than this shit. Than Biden? Um, I didn't like the Bush policies. I don't like the war Biden, over there. I didn't know nothing about his policies, man. Nah, but the I didn't know nothing about George W. We're in line about the weapons, weapons of, mass of mass destruction, destruction. And shit like that. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Saddam, no. Yeah, Saddam, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Saddam, who? <laughs> Saddam is dead. <laughs> I had to give it to him, y'all. I had to give it to him. He figured out the game in real time. He's like, oh, I think I get this shit now. No, I was like, who the real. fuck doesn't know Saddam, stupid? Why would I say that, dummy? <laughs> Women breastfeeding her husband. Okay. Rachel Bally says what? breastfeeding her husband has strengthened their bond. The 30-year-old mama three says she began breastfeeding her husband in 2017, and they have been closer ever, ever since. Well, the couple crazy. was on a cruise in 2017, and Rachel did not bring her breast pump. The overproduction of milk caused her much pain. Her husband, Alexander, offered to drink it in order to help her alleviate the pain. What a king, man. I've been there, baby. The rest was history. Yep. It's not a king for us. It started as Alexander just helping me out when I was in pain, but it turned into more of an emotional bonding thing. Alexander notes that ever since he's been drinking his wife's breast milk, he has gotten sick less and his skin has improved. He also says he prefers the taste of her breast milk to that of a cow's milk. Happened to me, man. London. I remember. I didn't know you had to. Uh, yeah, I thought you just. I know you had to get busy. I thought you. Brilliant idiots. Y'all remember that? No, when we did Brilliant Idiots in London. We did Brilliant Idiots in London, man. And my wife forgot her breast pump. Had to do the same thing. Couldn't stand to see my wife in pain. So wait, did you actually? Started sucking away, baby. No way. Absolutely, goddamn, Lutely. Get out of here. Motherfucking right. You damn right. But I didn't get addicted to it for years on end. You might have been. Oh, that's how your skin cleared up. Mm. Maybe, that, maybe. I mean, that was a. I did. I, I did that that weekend. But it's a. It's one of those things. If you see, if you've ever seen your wife in pain because that she can't get the breast milk out, you are gonna do what you got to do. You so know you what I'm saying? Sucked it out. It started sucking. Why not just squeeze it with your hand? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think. It, I don't think it comes out as fast or as much. Maybe I'm not sure. I don't know why. But it, I mean, it's the same reason they have breast pumps. Like women aren't just pumping their breasts, you know, just because they're trying to get, you know, food for the baby. Like that shit really be having women in pain. Yeah, you know the titties I mean? get all hard. Yeah, man. You got to do what you got to do. You never had to do that, Chris? Uh, no, my wife always had a pump. Oh, OK. Yeah, she just said my wife had just had forgot it because we was in London. And or maybe it was I don't know if she forgot it or we didn't have the plug for it. No. It was in her luggage, but you guys went in a different car, so you didn't have the luggage with you. Oh. Remember that? Because we went on two, we went on two different cars. Okay, I remember. All and right. uh, yeah, you were you were very uh, you were in dad mode right there. Hey, You're like, man. yo, we need to get this pump. Nobody wants to see their wife in pain. Facts. You know what I'm saying? The only husband in the history of life that's going to ever enjoy seeing his wife in pain is when Taylor ever gets married. That's the only thing. But um, what's, what else we got, Taylor? 
<laughs> Scroll down. Oh, did you see the hip hop 50? Oh, Tyrese. Yeah, what's up with Tyrese? I man? don't know, man. The GOAT. Chris wrote a book with Tyrese before. Didn't did you, Chris? you really? I did, Manology with Tyrese and uh, Reverend. Manology with Tyrese and Reverend. How was that experience for you, Chris? <laughs> Uh, Tyrese is a lot. I mean, I have love for Tyrese, but uh, we had our moments for sure. Oh. The only thing I don't like, man, is when people come on Breakfast Club, they do an interview, and the interview is received well for them, and then they just find a way to fuck up all the good PR that they got from said interview. So give me an example. Well, Tyrese... You know, we had a great hour and 20-minute conversation. We laughed. You know, we joked. We, we you know, we, we so many different things were explored, whether it was mental health issues, whether it was holding, you know, people accountable, whether it was talking about, you know, your friends not showing up for you. Like, it was just a bunch of different things that came from the conversation. You know what I mean? And it sparked a lot of different discussions. But I don't know if it was Tyrese. This is this, this what I told Tyrese. I spoke to Tyrese Saturday. I told Tyrese, hey, man, you went, saw the comments, right? Because the whole Envy saying I'll box him out went viral, right? And I think Tyrese just fed into those comments. Because you're, you, here's the thing. You were sitting right there. So if the comments bothered you that much... So it's perception. He thinks the perception of him... That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. And oh, so it's a shame. And so that's why he, you know, this, this headline, this is on Neighborhood Talk, it says, Tyrese cries while reflecting on his recent Breakfast Club interview, says DJ Envy and Charlamagne showed him no compassion. It took everything in me to stay in that seat. What does that mean? It means that after Envy said, box your mouth, it took everything in him to stay in that seat. We had an hour and 20 minute conversation, Tyrese. Like, 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 we laughed. Well, why, we why was he gonna box his mouth? Uh, because, as was revealed, Envy said that the reason they stopped being friends with Tyrese, despite him saving their marriage, allegedly, Tyrese became flirtatious with his wife. Why? What do you mean? Why was he flirtatious, huh? Oh, I don't know. Like through text messages or something? Oh yeah, phone calls. Yeah, phone calls. Uh, I don't know if it was any text messages. I think I don't know, but it definitely was phone calls. No, you can't do that. You want to play? Play some of the audio. Let, yeah. let him hear what Gia had to say, Tail Again. Appropriate. Like he was extremely demanding of my time and of my attention. Where if I didn't give him my time and my attention, he would get very angry. Well, what lines did he cross? You know, there was. Flirting and inappropriate compliments. Certain things that you don't say to a man's wife. And you upset that he wasn't flirting with you in any way, shape, or form? A little bit. No, you seem playing too much. Tyrese did help save my marriage, and I have a respect for him for that. Let's call my wife, please. Uh, Tyrese helped save our relationship when we were going through problems. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. That's crazy. It's kind of wild. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah, wild. That's crazy. It's kind of wild. So you know, my whole thing was, I wish that uh, I wish Ooh, it, I, w I wish Envy would have said that in the moment. I can't believe that he came on the the show. That's that, what I don't. Why get. would Envy let him come on the show? I don't know, man. I think Envy realized Tyrese was going through some type of episode. I'm serious. Like, I like you know, because a lot of stuff happened when Tyrese was on those psych meds. You know what I'm saying? Like, I cursed Tyrese out before. You know, talk crazy. We talk crazy to each other. Um, and I think that Envy just chalked it up to, hey, maybe he was still on the meds. You know what I mean? But Tyrese said himself, he wasn't on the meds around all of this time that all of this was happening. So That's, I don't know what the bro, fuck is going you're on. You're calling somebody's wife. You're dem one, demanding her time is crazy. That's your friend's wife. Yeah, you can't absolutely. take anything about it. Do that. And then also being flirtatious, saying different things that are complimentary. Nah, none of yeah, that. Yeah, man. No, nah, that's, no. Nah, he's. But they didn't he, have yeah. a conversation before he came on? No. There was no, so what? <laughs> he no. he could have boxed his mouth for that. No, they never had a they conversation. Nah, he's acting like a tip of the bro. He's, nah, that's- A tip of the- <laughs> Tip of this Oh, Damn. God. What the fuck? Tip of this 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 Tip of this
Oh man, yeah, I don't fucking know, man. I just be I, I, listen. I, I be I, I just be sitting back trying to have a good time, man. This the type of shit I don't I don't even care for. Cause my whole thing is if you sitting down with somebody and you having the conversation, air it all out. Don't leave me after the fact and then get online and start talking about what you should have did and should have said and yada yada. Like, nah, man. Who was not airing out, uh, out? Who was not airing? Tyree out? started it. Tyree started this because he went online this weekend crying, saying how it took everything him in him to stay out of that seat. And then yesterday he put up another video saying that DJ Envy was lying. He never disrespected Envy's wife. So that's what made Envy and his wife get on there today and tell, you know, uh. some of the details about what happened. It's like, nah, not only did you disrespect, you tried to... Holla. Yeah. But you he know? did say during the interview that he didn't remember any of that happening. That's I mean, what he said. That's what he said. I don't know. Where Taylor went? I don't know. Taylor! She went to a meeting. So do we need it for asking idiots? We need idiot. asking idiots, Taylor? You access that? Uh, Hello. This girl is still connected to the goddamn thing. Taylor's on drugs. <laughs> I'm, we gonna leave this in too. I want to. I want y'all to realize how how much of a narcotic person Taylor is. Yeah, I think she might be on some narcotics though. For like, real. how you gonna leave the room, get on a meeting, and we can hear you talking? I mean, what is this? Well, she meeting? must have realized we can hear her now. Can they hear us? Is the question. Oh, this episode is brought to you by the Freeze Pipe. Our friends at Freeze Pipe just launched a bunch of new products that are taking the cannabis market by storm for the smoothest and coldest way to smoke. You got to try a freezable pipe bubbler bong from Freeze Pipe. Their newly released mini bong and tornado bong are priced very affordably and punch well above their weight class. And for those that prefer smoking joints, blunts, and vapes, Freeze Pipe's new glycerin blunt tip brings much needed icy glycerin coldness when you're smoking any kind of joint, blunt, or vape. I'm telling you, all you have to do is insert it right here, then you rip those hits. It also has these nice little legs so it can stay up and it's not gonna burn any of your tables, your chairs, your couches, wherever you rest your joint or blunt, but it has that glycerin chamber right there. You're gonna freeze that up and when you hit on that joint or blunt, it's not gonna tear apart your throat, it's not gonna tear apart your lungs. It is going to be absolutely fabulous, okay? The point is, you can say goodbye to hard smoke and uh, coughing attacks by shopping for the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and dab rigs at thefreezepipe.com and use the code IDIOTS for 15% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com and the code IDIOTS for 15% off. Shop today and start fighting fire with ice. Okay, we back. Yeah, we did see the fan run up on uh, Drake on stage. Drake, you need to fire all your motherfucking security. Done. And Drake was very, 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 very calm. I ain't playing with nobody to get up on my space like that. And why do y'all do that? Do y'all really want to just be like, I'm the guy who ran up on stage to dap Drake up? Yes, yeah, Like, what do you think's going to happen when some shit like that go Definitely down, Definitely getting man? arrested. Come on, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stop that shit, man. All right. Stop let's it. do some asking idiots, Charlotte. What do we got here? Uh, I am Wood says, will we ever get an official brilliant idiots animation and live reaction to an old story? Give us a couple more years, man. You know what I'm saying? A couple more years. I'm I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm almost there. Where I'm just at the point where I'm like, fuck it all. <laughs> I'm honest with you, man. What you mean? Oh, I'm just like, great. fuck it all, man. It's like, what? like it's, it's just like. Say whatever we want. What's going to happen at this point? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, please. Yeah. I mean, no, no, yeah, no, no. But, 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 but when I say fuck it all, I'm talking about like as far as like even pulling up all old shit and like, you know. You know what I want to happen? Once we find a way to monetize old catalog. Because this is actually a good idea when you think about it. If somebody came to us and said, hey, we want to do Brilliant Idiots animation, but we want to animate old audio with this version of you reacting to it. That could be something interesting. Because it's almost like watching your own game tape. Imagine, what's that show that they have on, uh, is it ESPN? They used to have the quarterbacks looking at their own game. Was it Kobe? No, Kobe used to do it. 
You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, I saw one with uh, Jason Williams' white chocolate watching his highlights and kind of reacting. But I thought Kobe did one yeah, in he particular. Had a series. He had a series. Yeah, Kobe had a series where you would watch, it would be old players reacting to their old game tape. And I always found that fascinating. You know what I mean? Because even them thinking about it, maybe it's different in sports, but them talking about how they would have did something different. Yeah, uh, that's far. You know, that, that, that could be something that's interesting. Uh, Victor557 says, is there a piece of advice that you're happy that you didn't listen to? I mean, so why? so much. Everybody yeah. got some fucking words for you. On the come up, now, et cetera. But yeah, you just got to have your own conviction, you know? Yeah. My, my, my greatest one is when a, a, a cousin aunt in my family, she's, she, I call her my aunt, but she's more like a cousin because she was like my mom and dad's cousin somewhere down the line. But yeah, she told me that I shouldn't set my goal so high because if I when when I don't achieve them, I won't be disappointed. <laughs> and I literally said to her in this that moment, that is the stupidest shit mm -hmm. I ever heard somebody yeah. say. I was like, yo, if I set my goals high, I'm gonna hit something. I literally said, if I go aim for the moon, I'm at least hit the motherfucking stars the or a cloud or but yeah, something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna yeah. start here. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? You'll only go as far as you dream. <laughs> that's I, it? I tell that to comics all the time. They're like, I just wanna make a living on it. And I'm like, that's all you'll do. You got to dream big. Yeah. I think people say that because they're trying to be humble. Yeah, but fuck Universe all that. doesn't reward humility, man. You might be humble with everybody else, but you got to tell yeah. the fucking universe, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to be bigger than life. Yep. You know 100%. what I'm saying? Yes, 100%. I want to be, I want to be freaking Tadik. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, I mean, it is. I don't think it's, 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 I almost just want to give it to him. I, I always want to just be like, what? You want to be what, Charla? <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't even have nothing after it. I, I, I just know it. in that moment that was the place to say it. I just can't think of none of the good shit to say. You know what I'm saying? You know? You know what I mean, Taylor? What happened with Boosie? What happened with Boosie? Oh, man. Boosie got it. Boosie be playing. Boosie is a content creator. He is fucking genius. He's a content that. creator, he's man. So, uh, he's so entertaining. Taylor was <laughs> talking about the fact that Boosie came in the Waffle House and was saying that he was upset because they wouldn't let him cook a potato that he bought. I mean... That's content. <laughs> like, this is content. You got to see him is. on the, on the uh, what's it called? Uh, bite your podcast? Bite your podcast. <laughs> that was too obvious. Yeah. Well, y'all don't even know obvious. where I'm going with it. That was too obvious. No, so, y'all don't even know where I'm going with it. <laughs> What's what? the bite your pocket? <laughs> bite your pillow while his dick goes in. <laughs> That's the one, that is that is the one thing with Boosie though. He's an addict. <laughs> He's an addict with what? He's a, he is addicted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you yeah. had it. You had it. <laughs> Take the shot. You had it. <laughs> Why are you pumping, bro? You had me gas for a real, dude. Oh shit. <laughs> well, I didn't have nothing, man. It just, you had it. Nah, it just it looked like right I had there. it. Nah, it just looked like I did. I really did. <laughs> just, that was an ass. Uh, addict for this dick. Addict, 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 addict to dick. what? This dick. This dick. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Oh, all right. That was a slam dunk right there. That was crazy. <laughs> you had him too. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Uh Andrew Bro Brown Butter. Great yeah. name for this question. Brown Butter says, Andrew, what country gave you the worst shit? France. France. I mean, I had diarrhea for seven days minimum, France. Damn. Wow. I don't think my stomach is fully back from France. France. Really? <laughs> South of France. South of France, yeah. What was it? I don't know, something in France, bro. That shit got me, boom. And I was just fucking squirting for seven days, seven nights. Damn. Seven days, seven nights. Boy, was squirting. That's Sprinkler. What you want. Imagine yeah. making your girl squirt for seven days, seven nights. Oh, my God. That's what we dream about. That's what we dream about. I am Woods, yeah, Francis versus Fury. How we feeling? Uh, he bro, says he got Fury by a landslide. Fury Duh. should win this easy, but he is coming in way out of shape. That's for what him. I thought, too. But yeah. you know, I couldn't, I, I saw the weigh in, and I'm like, is Fury out of shape or Fury just Fury? Because Fury never looks quite in shape. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But this looks more out of shape I than he has. I thought it was just me. Been. Yeah, yeah. 
I think he thinks that this is just easy, and I think I think he genuinely believes Francis can't hurt him, which is crazy because Francis has amazing power. But maybe the power is different when he's got the gloves on. I mean, he's taking shots from Deontay Wilder. Nobody punches harder than him. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, the educated investor says, if you can go back in time and be friends with your parents, would you and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Be friends with my parents, would I and why? Yeah, I like them as people. They're, I love them as people. They're amazing. But if yeah, I was- Yeah, but then when your dad started telling you about that good ass head he got. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's I'm crazy. shorty from Scotland. You don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to hear that shit. You don't want to hear that shit. You do, you, no, but they are your parents because you're going back in time. Yeah, you got to shush. You got to shush right there, girl. Yo, you know what you got to do? Taylor, I want to know. No, seriously. Why did you think we didn't know that? I feel like we knew that. I, I said that. I just said. Y'all been acting a little bit weird on this episode. Oh, good. What are you talking about acting weird? You're, the, you're the fucking cannibal. I have a question for you guys. You're a fucking cannibal. Oh, I have a question for you guys. Here we go. You're a cannibal. No. And you need to stop playing. I you're a, a cannibal. <laughs> hey, I have hey, a break. <laughs> you're a cannibal, and you need to stop playing. And I don't want to hear nothing else no, about bro, it. No, it's an asking you question. I'm asking you. You're a cannibal. You're a cannibal. Uh, you're a cannibal. Uh, no, for real. You're a cannibal. You're a cannibal. You're a cannibal. Stop! This is a good one for Philly. <laughs> you're a cannibal. You're a cannibal. You are a cannibal. I'm not gonna ask what it you is. You got to. Me. This is a good yeah, one for yeah, Philly. I got a good one. You're a, <laughs> you're a cannibal. You're a cannibal. What's a cannibal? You're a cannibal. What's a cannibal? Can a bull eat this ass? Can a young bull eat your <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> what is wrong? There we go. There we go. Charles is back. Girl, girl, pass my question. Charles is back. What was the episode that got y'all to where y'all are today? Like how Ray J kind of set the Breakfast Club up. Like what was? What do you think the episode? was? What was the one that blew up? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if Burning Idiots got one of those. I think it was just consistency. Yeah. You know, so they've been doing this shit 10 years. So I think just every week, because a lot of times, man, the thing with Burning Idiots, at least for me, it's like you drop a bomb and don't even look back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't even understand the destruction you caused yep. or how big it was yeah. until you just out in the street and somebody says something to you and you're like, what the fuck? Hmm. For whatever reason, that oink oink shower time still hits with people. That shit go crazy. And I still don't even know what the fuck that shit means. Neither do I. <laughs> I have no idea. I, don't know what that I have no either. idea what oink oink shower time means at all. Nah. That is crazy. That is crazy. Oink oink shower time is crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's one of those things. Is yeah, I can't, yeah. We can't even talk about that anymore. Honestly, it's I really don't even long. know what the fuck that shit means. Yeah. Oh man, these last three are good. Let's let's try to run through these real quick. Yeah, but make sure you do the slide this for sure. <laughs> Look how happy he gets. <laughs> oh, God, man. Oh. I can't even keep a straight face. Um, right, the wise the runner thing. says, what do you have complete faith in still that you didn't before? That, that don't make no sense, but I get what you're saying, the wise runner. What do you have complete faith in that you didn't before is what he's trying to Fitness. say. Fitness. Mm. Hundred percent fitness. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I used to not, but now I feel like I've been so committed to it, and I feel like I, I you know, what kind of fitness? Fitness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Gay. Like, what do you have complete <laughs> faith in that you didn't before? This, this was an episode I'm gonna tell you what I have idiots. complete faith in. I'm gonna tell you never growing up is what I have complete faith in. Yo, never. That shit is so overrated, man. Yo. <laughs> right. I'm gonna hit Biden with this one. Watch, you gonna see. Cinema Nomad says, "Would you rather be governed by aliens or Joe Biden?" Hmm. Are you looking at me? <laughs> I'm just asking. Would you rather be governed by aliens or Joe Biden? I'm gonna go with Biden, only because I don't know what aliens would want to do. At least yeah. with Biden, we pretty much know what Biden wants to do. Like, there's no surprises. 
you know, Trump has been the first person that has surprised us with some shit, like the shit that they got going on now. But uh, Biden, there's no surprises. At least yeah. we know what he wants to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So wait, you would rather, you can handle this because you know what's going to go on. Yes. Whereas the aliens, we don't it, know what they no expect. No fucking truth. Nah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah. do a hip punch. It's going to be That's one of the craziest things. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> You got a hip punch. If there's aliens around, you know you're going to hip punch. It's not even a question. It's not even a question you have to hip punch, right? Them hip punches be crazy. They do. They do. A hip punch is different. Hip punch is crazy. Hip punch is, yo, hip punch is one. You ever had a hip punch, Taylor? (sighs) Yep. All right, next question. <laughs> what else? We don't need no Cowabunga money. Cole. We can end on this one. Yeah. Cowabunga Cole says, anything Charlotte and Andrew are looking to resolve in their lives by the end of the year? That is a fantastic fucking question. By the end of the year? No. I have uh, I got some some business things I want to resolve by the end of the year. Ah. Meaning meaning that I hope yes. that they get resolved and the business gets done. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like yes. the deals get done and shit like that. I hope that. But um anything other than that, nah, man. You know what I'm saying? I have, if you mean like friendship, I could give a fuck less. Uh. I, I, I am I am nah. Pick a side, you stay there. <laughs> I don't care how bad we fell off. If you call me and say you need me, I'll hang up. Wow. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I hope that's not what you meant by that type of resolve. For me, it's just it's literally just uh just business stuff. I'm ready, man. We here now. It's the holidays. This shit over, bro. What, yes. what do you mean? Like uh the year's year? over. Yeah, the entertainment. No, the entertainment Bruh. the entertainment year is almost over. That's, that's the thing that people rap. don't realize. Once Thanksgiving comes. That's it. It's yeah. over. For it's me, it's the, for me, it's now. After Labor Day, once the iHeart Radio Festival comes, which is it's at the over. end of the month, it's a wrap. It's yeah. like October, November, December. It's over. Like you know, Halloween. Then we got Thanksgiving a week off. Then we off damn near the whole month of December. Yeah. So basically, it's now is a little bit more of like a time crunch. Yeah, I'm ready, man. I'm ready to. I'm ready to shut this Can shit you down. You guys, Chris, in the studio this year with like a uh, big Halloween outfits because last year you guys didn't dress. We up. need to come with a big Halloween outfits. That's facts. What you want to see us dressed as? <laughs> That sounded so yeah, I know. zesty. <laughs> what, what, what do you want to see us dressed as? Eh? I'm me personally. I'm going as uh, I'm going as a Crunchberry. A Crunchberry. Ooh. Yep. Ooh. Like I wouldn't buy. Cereal? I wouldn't mind being a misfit. No, not the cereal. Al. I'm, That's I'm what I was fucking thinking. forty years old almost. <laughs> I'd be a misfit. A misfit's good. Yeah. Ah, uh, ha ha. What? <laughs> she don't want to ask what kind of misfit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, You want me to say what? (laughs) I'm not saying what. I'm not saying anything. Don't miss the opportunity to fit this dick in your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) He even did it wrong. 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 (laughs) Oh, man. Is that it, guys? (laughs) What are you going to be for Halloween? You should actually be a Crunchberry. You should be the Liberty Bell. Fuck you. Whoa. I'm not being no Liberty Bell or nothing That'd like that. That'd be dope. Represent for Philly for once. Stop. <laughs> I think that'd be fantastic. Represent for, you know, you all be you people in New York, your Statue be, of Liberty. You could be a punch desk. You could be, yeah, one of those two. Yeah, I don't have nothing else to resolve by the end of this year, man. I'm just trying to get out this fucking year. I got to get envy out this year. It's been a crazy year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's had a rough year, bro. I got to get envy out this year. He's he fighting everybody. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Envy's got too much stress. I got to get envy out this year, man. We're going to get him out. <sighs> okay, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit. You're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.